Get out your turtlenecks and long underwear because the earth is going to be blasted by an arctic polar vortex this weekend. In some areas this polar vortex is going to be extremely problematic. Like we're talking frozen nostrils people. According to atmospheric scientist John Martin, we're going to freeze. So is this polar vortex going to affect the area that you live in? Well I'm going to obviously tell you in just a second, but first. The intro. What is good? You're watching Inform Overload where we tell you about the most interesting news stories we find on the internet and we make them more entertaining. I'm Charlotte Dobre. Why don't you give that subscribe button a good old punch for daily news updates that will make you depressed. They might give you anxiety, but they won't make you depressed. I don't know about you guys, but I'm heading to the grocery store after work to stock up on everything I'm going to need for the weekend. Because a huge chunk of the globe is going to freeze up due to a polar vortex of icy cold air coming our way. The cold air is especially going to affect the east coast of Canada and the United States, as well as reach as far as Florida and the Midwest and even Europe. The polar vortex is a swirling mass of fast moving cold air that's several miles high and forms in the stratosphere. Here's a gif made by Zach Lawrence as a visual aid. Who doesn't love a visual aid, right? I love a good visual aid. The polar vortex forms during the northern hemisphere winter, when the upper part of the earth gets unspeakably cold because it experiences little to no sunlight. The polar vortex usually stays where it belongs up in the arctic. Cold northern air keeps it in place like a fence. But occasionally it makes its way down south. This is because waves of air can push the vortex around. Warmer air swirls around in the troposphere, which is the lowest part of the atmosphere that reaches about 6 miles above the surface. The warm air mixes with the cold air and it collides. The warm air pierces into that fence that keeps the polar vortex in place. Whenever this happens, the air swirling in the polar vortex starts to leak out, and soon enough it spills out and heads our way. And guess what? There's nothing we can really do about it for now. Some scientists think that the warming globe is a huge contributor to these gusts of arctic air. The warmer the planet gets, the more likely that warm air is going to make its way up to the arctic and cut into that vortex. The polar vortex is expected to chill huge chunks of the globe from this weekend until the very least the end of January. It could last several weeks. The US is going to be blasted by repeated gusts of arctic air over the coming month. Thankfully once the sun starts to rise over the arctic in the spring, the polar vortex starts to warm up and it dissipates. The problem is, as our planet warms up, these really brutal winters are only going to get worse and longer. Warming surface temperatures in the arctic causes the melting of bright white reflective sea ice, which then allows the dark ocean to absorb more heat and therefore release more heat that then mixes in with that polar vortex. According to recent reports, the polar vortex has actually split up into three separate parts. Certain areas of Canada and the eastern United States are going to experience temperatures of negative 35 degrees Celsius, negative 31 degrees Fahrenheit and will be walloped by blizzards. Kansas City is going to experience unusually cold temperatures which is definitely going to suck for the Patriots and Chiefs championship game. I mean listen, this blast of cold air doesn't have to be terrible. Sure you can't really go outside without your nostrils freezing shut, but maybe it's a good opportunity to stay home and get some work done. Or reorganize your space. How are you going to spend your upcoming weekend inside? Are you going to brave the weather and go outside? Let me know in those comments, but while you ponder that, I'm going to do some comment replies. Jeanette Flores said, Charlotte, are you Australian? No. I'm not Australian. I was a terrible Australian accent, but I feel like Australians have an accent, so I'm not really sure where you got that from. Andrea A said, I feel like Charlotte isn't going to see this comment, but if she sees this comment, I love you my potato queen. I did see your comment and I love you too my little potato. Alyssa Wallaby said, get news updates that won't make you depressed, said by Charlotte who has been wearing black in almost every video of 2019. I mean, true. But I like to think of myself as a tortured artist who wears black, not necessarily a depressed artist. Black. Mason Bowie said, I yelled hit or miss in class and everyone just looked at me and I got detention because a teacher in the hallway heard me. I mean, Mason, you're not supposed to do the TikTok test in class, you're supposed to do it in a Walmart, but I appreciate the efforts. Kaya said, I don't have a clever comment yet, give me time. Edit. Roses are red, violets are blue, I like my own insta pics because no one else wants to. That was simultaneously sad and cute and relatable and I just don't know how to feel right now, but well done, nice poem. We have come to the end of the video. Just a quick reminder, if you guys hear about any cool stories that you think would be great for IO, I love hearing your suggestions, so why don't you send me a message on Instagram with your suggestions, I would really appreciate it. My handle is posted in the description of this video. Welcome to the end screen, to keep watching IO, check out that playlist. And obviously if you enjoyed your time here, give this video a like, sub and turn on those notifications so I can see you in the next IO video.